Hey everybody, Jake here and welcome to the hobby. It's been a little bit over a year since the release of Sword and Shield for the Pokemon trading card game. And we've seen a total of seven Pokemon cards set for Sword and Shield already, the most we've ever seen in such a short span of time. And a lot of people were thinking that Pokemon fatigue would set in sometime at the end of last year, but it hasn't. Pokemon has continued to become a popular hobby. And so I think it's a good time for us to look back at all of the Sword and Shield set that has been released and just see which one ranks the best among all these through some basic analysis. I think it'll be a lot of fun to see how these sets compare to one another. I'm sure you have some favorites, so I'm sure you'll want to know where they end up on the list. In last place as the weakest Sword and Shield Pokemon card set, and keep this in mind with a grain of salt because all of these sets are really solid. I feel like we haven't really seen a poor or weak or bad Pokemon card set in a very long time, so it was actually very challenging to rank all of these Pokemon cards set, but the weakest Sword and Shield set in my mind is got to be Rebel Clash. Doing some deep digging into the whole entire set, comparing all of the cards from this set, and it does show that Rebel Clash is a little bit weak when it comes to the cards in the set. There are a few full art trainer cards that are kind of desirable, such as Sonya and uh, Boss's Order, Giovanni, really iconic villain from the Pokemon series. But in general, I feel like this set is just missing just a little bit more. It just needed a little extra push for it to become a really solid set. There's just not really a chase card inside of this set. There's a highly desirable gold frost moth card, really gorgeous artwork. But in general, I think that most people would agree that Rebel Clash is just a little bit more lackluster compared to all the other Sword and Shield sets that we've seen so far. It's just missing a little bit something. All the other sets seem to have some more desirable cards, some more interesting cards. So Rebel Clash, unfortunately, has to be the weakest of all of the Sword and Shield sets. Next up in my list for the best Sword and Shield set, we have probably a controversial set and that is Darkness Ablaze. Some people are gonna think that I placed this set way too low, but hear me out on why is it placed just slightly above Rebel Clash, because I think some people might think Darkness Ablaze should be far higher. When looking at this set, I realized pretty quickly that it's actually kind of a weak set. There is a Charizard V Max in this set as the chase card, and no one should ever underestimate Charizard. But outside of Charizard, this set is missing a lot of other middle of the road kind of cards. There aren't any other really desirable chase cards inside of this set. There's a Gold Rillaboom, which is pretty cool. That's actually my chase card from Darkness Ablaze. Never pulled it. I did pull the Charizard V Max, so that's pretty neat. But in general, I think this set just needs a little bit more. There's just no full art trainers in this set that are really desirable, which is actually something that Rebel Clash has a plus over compared to Darkness Ablaze. And another big issue with Darkness Ablaze is that there are what I would consider rarer or more desirable Charizard from Sword and Shield than the Charizard V Max from Darkness Ablaze. There's of course the secret rare Charizard V Max from Champion's Path, and there's the shiny Charizard V Max from Shining Fates. So there are even bigger, badder, and more expensive Charizard than the one in Darkness Ablaze. So it, I think this set is going to get a little bit overshadowed in the next couple of years. If people want to go Charizard hunting, they're probably gonna pick those other sets over Darkness Ablaze. And if you want a full art trainers, you're probably gonna pick other sets as well. So there's just not a lot of cards that Darkness Ablaze has going for it outside of the Charizard. I think it's missing those middle of the road cards, whereas Rebel Clash is missing a really good chase cards. So these two sets, combined would have made one amazing set, but of course they have their own issues with each one. Next up on my list for the best Sword and Shield sets, we have Battle Styles, the most recent set to be released. This is actually a really solid middle of the road kind of set. I have very little to really complain about with Battle Styles. There are some really expensive alternative art cards as the chase cards for Battle Styles. Most of these are going for over $100, which I think is insane. But I think they might have reduced the pull rates for alternative arts. That's my only 
uh, reasoning for why these alternative arts are so expensive. You've asked me like two months ago if I think these alternative arts would be this expensive. I would have said no way, but here we are. There are some really cool alternative art. There are some really cool full art trainer cards from this set. And there's some cool gold cards from Battle Styles, including a really popular one, which is Hound Doom. A lot of people like doggos. Hound Doom is a doggo and a very iconic doggo at that. So there are a lot of cool cards in Battle Styles. Next up, we have another controversial set. I think a lot of people are gonna say that I placed this set way too high, but hear me out on it once again. We have Champion's Path, which is placed pretty darn high compared to a bunch of other lists. So why is Champion's Path so high on this list? And honestly, I did some thought on it, and there's a lot of great reasons for why Champion's Path is so high. And it's actually two reasons. It's Charizard. Charizard is the main reason why this set is placed so high. I'm not a huge Charizard collector, but I know a lot of people are. I know how desirable and popular Charizard is in the trading card game. So in general, I think Champion's Path is going to be one of those really solid set five years down the line. It might not look super amazing right now because if you open Champion's Path in the last six months, you might be a little bit salty that you weren't able to pull Charizard because that's really the only desirable cards from this set. There's really not much else. If you like Hop, do you like Hop? If you like Suspicious Food Can, there's plenty of those. If you open up Champion's Path, you're gonna see a lot of duplicate cards again and again and again because it's such a small set. And I think that's what has a lot of people irritable. But once again, I say never underestimate Charizard. The power of Charizard is really, really powerful. And five years down the line, I think a lot of people are gonna slowly change their mind about how good of a set Champion's Path really is. It's a small set, but we have had small sets in the past. Shining Legends is a really small set. It's got like 70 cards, same as Champion's Path, but of course everyone loves Shining Legends nowadays, so I think Champion's Path could go down that route. And of course the Elite Trainer Box for Champion's Path has a really gorgeous Charizard design. You very rarely ever see Charizards on Elite Trainer Boxes, and when he is on there or she's on there, they always do really well. So in general, yes, Champion's Path as a set is a little bit weak unless you're chasing Charizard, then it might be really fun for you. But in general, this is a set that I think people are gonna look back at and are gonna continuously find more and more interesting later down the line. Next up, we have another controversial pick, or at least what I think is controversial, and that is Base Set Sword and Shield. That's right, I'm placing Base Set Sword and Shield over all of the prior sets on this list. So why is Base Set Sword and Shield so high? And I didn't think I would place it this high, but looking over the set list, Base Set Sword and Shield is really, really solid. There's a couple of other reasons, and I'll go into those as well, but overall, Base Set Sword and Shield has a Chase Marnie 4 Trainer card, which is highly desirable. And it comes from the fact that we don't have a couple of other uh, full art Marnie cards that are currently Japanese exclusive, but hint hint, they might come to English. I'm pretty confident in that. But this set also has a lot of other things going for it. It has a gold Zacian V, it has a gold Zamazenta V, so really iconic duo. And outside of that, it is a base set and people tend to enjoy collecting base sets over any other sets, especially down the line. I, I, got, I can't stress this enough. You gotta think long-term with a lot of these collectibles. And what I think is going to happen is five to 10 years down the line, most collectors aren't going to be collecting every single set. There's just too many sets for people to collect. So what would a reasonable collector really do? A reasonable collector would say, well, I'm gonna collect all the base sets. So give me X and Y base set booster box, Sun and Moon base set booster box, and Sword and Shield base set booster box. So that will be my collection. They're gonna look great on display. You can see every single one of the generations and it's gonna look really solid. You're probably not gonna collect every single set because 10 years down the line, most of these sets kind of blend in together. They kind of become obscure. It's kind of hard to tell what cards in what. Most people won't really remember anymore. But in general, everyone remembers 
the base set and Sword and Shield has a really iconic base set with all of the main features there. You got Zacian, Zamazenta, and Marnie. So everything that's really super iconic about uh, Sword and Shield is in this set. It even has all of the starter Pokemons as well. So there's everything that you would want from Sword and Shield in a neat little bow package. And I think long term, base at Sword and Shield is going to do really well. Next up on my list, we have Vivid Voltage. Really, really good set. There's very little to complain about Vivid Voltage. It's such a good set. There's so many things going for it, right? You got the $400 Chase Fat Pikachu card that everyone loves, but there's also a ton of middle of the road cards. And I can't stress this enough. You really need a bunch of middle of the road cards for set to be good because you're probably not gonna pull the fat Pikachu, so you might have to settle for some other cards. And there's plenty of good cards from Vivid Voltage, plenty of desirable cards. In fact, I looked it up and there's over 30 cards that are valued at $10 or more on TCG Player, which is really good. That's a lot of cards over $10. Most of these other sets don't even have 10 cards over $10. So having 30 is a really wild number. And it really goes to show how good of a set Vivid Voltage is overall. There's a ton of iconic full art trainer cards from this set. All of the popular trainers from the Sword and Shield game. We got B, we got Nessa, we got Leon. So a bunch of the popular ones, but there's a bunch of other popular cards inside of this set. Even the full art Pikachu is a really hot card. All of the full art cards in all these sets are doing really well. And Vivid Voltage has amazing rare cards as well. So it just keeps stacking and stacking all the amazing stuff inside of this set. So yeah, Vivid Voltage, a really, really hot set. I have a couple of Vivid Voltage Elite Trainer boxes that I have stowed away. I kind of missed out on a couple of other Elite Trainer boxes in the past, and I do not want to miss out on Vivid Voltage because I think the Elite Trainer box especially will do really well long term. So I have a couple of those, and if I practice what I preach, then holding them long term, I think they will do extremely well. Next up, we have our final set on this list, and that is Shining Fates. Some people are gonna put Vivid Voltage over Shining Fates, and I think that's completely okay. But after doing my analysis and reviewing all the cards in these sets, I feel like Shining Fates has an edge over Vivid Voltage. It's like Vivid Voltage, but plus plus. It's even better than Vivid Voltage in a lot of categories. So how is it better? Shining Fates, very similar to Vivid Voltage, has a ton of really cool full art trainer cards, but it also has a Chase Charizard card. It also has a shiny VMAX subset. It also has amazing rares. It also has gold rares. It has a bunch of additional stuff in this set as well. The pull rates for Shining Fates is probably the best pull rates I've ever seen in any uh, English release set. Like no other set comes close to Shining Fates in terms of pull rates. The pull rates is insanely high. It's even better than Hidden Fates. And I've done a comparison of the pull rates and Shining Fates does stand above Hidden Fates. And the big reason for that I think is because the Shining Fates subset is so large. There's over a hundred shiny cards inside of this set and a lot of desirable ones too. So yeah, Shining Fates is gonna be an interesting one to watch out long term because a lot of people know about how amazing uh, Hidden Fates is, but Hidden Fates hasn't done the best so far. The best performing Sun and Moon era set is actually Team Up, and there's a lot of reasons for that, but I think the best performing Sword and Shield set is also going to be just a regular run-of-the-mill set. It's not going to be one of the special set, uh, in the short run at least. And I think that's going to be an interesting watch to see like which one is going to outpace the other one. Is Shining Fates going to outpace Vivid Voltage or is Vivid Voltage going to outpace Shining Fates? Down the line, it's going to be a really close race. I think they might be neck and neck for a little bit of a while. I think Vivid Voltage is off to a much better start than Shining Fates. Shining Fates is still being heavily printed. There's more 
stock coming of Shining Fate over the next couple of months, but it looks like restocks of uh, Vivid Voltage has kind of dwindled. I'm very confident that the Pokemon company is going to reprint more Vivid Voltage. So it's really gonna be interesting down the line to see which one of these two sets is going to outpace the other one. I do think Vivid Voltage is going to be off to a better start at the beginning of the race, sort of saying it. But if my analogy continues, I do think Shining Fakes will catch up and will eventually outpace Vivid Voltage in the long term. All right, everybody, that's the end of today's list. If you guys agree or disagree with any of my points, be sure to let me know down in the comments because I do read every single comment on all my videos. And if you'd like to purchase any of the products from this list, then be sure to check out TCG Player down in the description. All their products are currently at market price. So it would be really cool if you guys would like to collect any of these additional items for your own collection. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.